It's Andrea, I'm here with Agnes Global in front of the Holiday Inn Camden and we're about to check out the gay wedding show, so let's go! Hi, I'm Andrea with Out News Global and we are here with Rocket Hall, Paul Isbinski, um, at the Gay Wedding Show in Camden, Lock. So what do you do? <laughs> I'm Director of Sales and Marketing here um, at Rocket Hall. We have three venues. Rocket Hall is based in Hertfordshire um, and we're not too far away from London, 42 minutes away from London. So we've got the three venues, uh, the Hall, uh, our Oak Room and the Oboe Stelac. Well, I see that you have a lot of nice venues. Which one is the most popular one? I would say that's a hard question. Um, you've asked a very hard question. I would say all of them. They're all very, very unique. The hall, I think, probably is the most spectacular. With um, So guests can dine up to 150 to have their wedding there. And we've got bedrooms and we've, we're very quintessentially British in that we have the butler service. I can see it looks like a palace almost. Are those historical venues? It's a very historic venue. Um, two Prime Ministers have lived there, um, Lord Palmerston and Lord Melbourne. So, and then Queen Victoria came to stay. So yes, we've got a lot of history. Wow, thank you so much. Listen, you're so welcome. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. I'm Andrea from Out News Global. Hi, uh, I'm here with Sarah and Francesca from Knuckles. Uh, hi, nice to meet you. Hi, nice to meet you. Hi. So, could you explain who you are and what you're doing? So, we are from Knuckles, which is a full-service law firm. Um, we are based in London, but we also have another office out in Bishop Stortford. But we're here today, really, to talk to people about the way in which we can support families for all of their legal needs really and also sort of financially. So I work in family law and deal particularly with sort of LGBT issues, surrogacy and assisted reproduction and that sort of thing. Um, and Sarah is in our wills and probate team. Could you tell me a little bit about what service you provide? So certainly when people are um, forming new relationships, uh, they need to think about getting their affairs in order. For example, lots of people don't know that when they get married, marriage automatically cancels the will so they would need to think about their wills and also perhaps look at putting in place uh, prenuptial agreements and look at how people own their assets own their properties and make sure that that uh, reflects their needs and uh, in the light of their new relationships okay. and so surrogacy how does it work for somebody who is interested in it how exactly does it work for people who don't know anything about it it's a really good question and a lot of people won't know anything about it and as you can imagine there's a lot of information on the internet and they're just not really sure what the first steps are. So generally we advise that people come in and just talk through the process with us because they're not sure what the legal position is. A lot of people think that surrogacy itself is illegal in the UK, which it isn't. Um, a lot of people don't know whether to look abroad to find a surrogate or whether they can do it here in the UK and, and what the process is. So the first thing is really just to come and speak to us and get some advice. Just understand how it works, what decisions need to be made, and then we can talk you through the whole thing from start to finish. So you help with the whole process? Exactly, yeah. We really like to help our clients, so as corny as it sounds, we will try and answer any question you have, help you through whatever process you're going through, um, and I think that's really our key feature. Yeah. And why uh, did you decide to focus on LGBT rights in, with no calls? Why? Um, it's partly from, from the family work that we do, uh, particularly in surrogacy and assisted reproduction, there's just sort of more of a market there. But it's also, I think, working, uh, we did the show last year with Gino and just working with him, just getting a bit more of an awareness about the fact that actually being LGBT friendly is just something that people really appreciate and isn't necessarily something that people feel they do get from every law firm or from every service provider. So it was just a good area for us. Yeah. Do you think there's a big demand from uh, same-sex couples to get legal advice? Yes, I think definitely. And I think that it's, uh, it's really helpful to make sure that we support them throughout their 
um, new relationship but also going forward throughout their lives and that's very much about how we like to work we like to get to know our clients and so I'll have clients who I've acted for for 20 plus years who ring me up and say I'm doing this Sarah what do you think is there anything I should think about and that's really nice for us we enjoy working with clients like that and it means we can be proactive for our clients and think about things for them and uh, deal with raise issues that they may not have thought themselves so we can really be proactive for them which is really nice and uh, we really enjoy that. And I'm here with Leander from From Michael Shirts. You own a shirt company called From Michael. That's right, we do bespoke shirts off the shelf or you can have anything you like printed onto your cuffs. We thought it would be nice for the wedding fair so you can have, I don't know, a picture of your partner, your wedding vows written into your collar, shirts, anything you want. And you make also women's shirts since you wear a woman? Well, we don't <laughs> actually. At the moment our bespoke or off the shelf shirts are all men's but if you want one made to measure, you can have any size you want, so it'll fit women, men. I'm wearing a man's one, but actually, as you can see, it fits really well. Yeah, it looks uh, great. Yeah, and you can have the sleeves a little shorter, but the collars are fine. So, um, We've had people that have had whole shirts printed, fronts, backs, but generally we like the cuffs because it gives you a little bit of personalization that you can send a message to your loved one or keep something close to your heart with you all the time. Okay. So that's the theory behind it. It's all online. Um, so yeah, any measurements or any questions, you can go online and ask the guys all about it. Okay. What is the craziest design somebody has asked to do on the shirt? <laughs> the craziest the one the I've seen. Tube. Yeah, the, well, <laughs> it was a chap who worked in the city and he redesigned the London tube map, but he renamed every single tube stop oh. to something personal to him. Oh, wow. that's <laughs> so romantic and it crazy. Was. When he had his shirt, his, his jacket on, you didn't see it when he took his jacket off. Yeah. It was full on. Do a lot of people wear those shirts for their wedding? Uh, yes, they do. It's yeah. quite a nice personal touch. I think it's yeah. the romantic bit of having something special to you. They've also yeah. been given as gifts to couples as weddings, yeah. so it's been quite a nice one for, I don't know, family members. They also had um, a number of them for a stag or a hen thing, so they'll get a whole bunch, you know, they'll get five or six of those, so on the stag, you know, they'll wear those. <laughs> Gift that keeps on giving. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and why is it called From Michael? Oh, the two owners, both their fathers were called Michael, and they had a love of shirts that they instilled in their boys, so Simon and Richard, um, their fathers were called Michael and they called the shirt company in their memory. Fonda Cox. Ooh, the wonderful Fonda Cox. So, what are you doing here today? Um, I'm actually on the pool. I know it's the wrong place to look, but you know, when you see some couples that are a bit nervous at a wedding fair, that's breakable and I stand a chance of getting in there. So, do you plan on getting married? Um, I've already done it twice, but third time lucky, eh? Ah, third time's a charm, right? Definitely. <laughs> Do you perform at any venues we can go see you? Um, I do. I, I perform across London. My favourite venue in London is down in Leytonstone, the Northcote Arms. You can catch me there on a Sunday night. On a Sunday night? Yeah. <laughs> Not at church? Uh, no, that's, that's in the morning. Oh, that's yeah. how I get the bruises on my knees. <laughs> Here with? Ashley. So you are a baker? I, well, I'm, I'm a cake decorator, cake maker, yes. Oh, okay. Tell me, is it still in the, the fashion to do a naked cake? Because I remember that was still the big trend of weddings. Yes, um, a few years ago, naked cakes were very, very, very popular. Yeah. Um, now, now it's not so popular, but then you get things like a semi-naked cake. Which is? Which is like a naked, but you've got like a very thin layer of icing around the, around the uh, outside. Yeah. And you can see a little bit of the cake coming through. But um, when, my, when my clients ask me about naked cakes, I say, why don't you try for a semi-naked? Because what happens is it protects the cake because the naked cake can, if it's sitting outside for a long time, it gets dry, you know, it, so semi-naked at least has a little protection. Okay, tell me about this black cake. That's very unusual for a wedding. Um, is that in demand or? Well, I, I, I've, I've had clients um, who's asked for something different yeah. and, and um, you know, uh, nobody said he'd taken up, but a lot, a lot of people have seen black cakes and said they want to do it. Um, I, I, I think black is beautiful. It's a, it's a beautiful backdrop. Uh, yeah, I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like white. White is very popular. It's very traditional. But um, now a lot of couples want to go for something that is not so traditional, not so yeah. not so usual. So a black is a good a good uh, alternative. Do you get a lot of pressure on you? 
I put the pressure on myself because yeah. I want to make sure that what I what I give is, is good and, a, and my couple will enjoy it. Um, so yeah, so the pressure I put on myself is, but it keeps me on my toes. What is the craziest demand you've ever had for a cake? <laughs> the craziest demand was, um, well, uh, flavor. Because I had a, a couple who, um, who I asked how, how adventurous is their palate. And they say very adventurous. And when I, you know, I have, I have a consultation with them and tasting. And then I ask them, what is their favorite food? And they love Japanese. So I came, they asked me to come up with a, with a flavor, which is very unusual. So not a sushi cake, but, <laughs> but I did a cake, um, which is a black sesame sponge. But it was a, a white chocolate miso and wasabi cream in the inside. Um, and they didn't tell their, their, their guests, yeah. but they wrote to me and said that, the, that one of the best moments of the evening was a group of their friends at the buffet table were fighting for the last oh. bits of crumb of the cake. Yeah. So with their forks they were all having. Yeah. So obviously they enjoyed it. Yeah. But yeah, so that was a, a good challenge. That, that sounds amazing. Uh, so I, yeah. I, I, enjoy, I enjoy coming up with weird and wacky. But as long as it's nice, you know, yeah. you never know. It's something yeah. different. What, what's, what's the most popular demand you have with cake? Well, chocolate is very popular. But I always do chocolate with a twist. So I, I add something inside it, like a like salted caramel or, or um, chopped hazelnuts. Um, um, or it depends. Some seasonal, they, they like seasonal stuff. So um, so citrusy is very popular for the summer. And then in the autumn, you have more apple. I'd like an apple crumble cake and stuff, which is more, you know, yeah. Amazing.